sharks have been really successful over the past few million years because they adapt, they're quite resilient. But the human activities and the impacts that we bring into the ocean are limiting the possibility of adaptation. My name is George Fonch and I'm a marine biologist here at the University of the Azores. My family has been in the Azores for as long as there are records. As a kid I would spend all the time I could in the water and it just became almost inevitable to be doing something with my life that would be connected with the sea. But I can clearly remember a period after watching Jaws for the first time that helped me to increase my uh, curiosity about sharks and rays and predators in general. The Azores is an excellent place to study sharks and other sorts of open ocean marine megafauna because it's sort of a hot spot in the middle of the Atlantic. And having all these sea mounts and islands it brings in all this diversity of megafauna, including blue sharks. Blue sharks are found in almost every ocean. They're beautiful sharks. They're very, very elegant. They're very slick. They have this beautiful blue color that gives them the name. They are an open ocean top predator. So like any top predator, they have a role to control the ecosystem, but also they are the most fished species of shark in the planet. Blue sharks are now being used not just for their fins, but also the meat is transformed into fish sticks and all sorts of byproducts. Fishing all these blue sharks is definitely not sustainable. Estimates range from 50 million to 300 million sharks a year. That's a lot of individuals, that's a lot of sharks. Para já compramos 250 kilos, cortado, baldes, congelado. Electronic tagging of sharks and other animals has been around for a few decades, but the way they are deployed, the way they are attached to sharks in particular, has not evolved that much. Invasive techniques normally involve intramuscular anchor that has to be inserted into the animal or screws on the dorsal fin that attach and secure tags that stay for the rest of the animal's life. We had to come up with a new way to non-invasively deploy our instruments on the shark. And that's when the idea of the lasso came in. So this is one of the multi-sensor tags with the GPS sensors, the radio transmitter, the accelerometer inside, plus the uh, speed meter here. And then the trick is we get this harness around the shark and then we adjust it to the girth of the shark. Then, uh, hopefully, in two days, this galvanic link will basically dissolve and it opens the harness, so this end is loose, and everything floats up to the surface. And then we have to find it and re recover it and download all the data. We had the idea of the harness, but honestly, I didn't have the courage to try it on a uh, blue shark because I was afraid I would be uh, bitten, of course. Hey, Fred. How are you? Good. Hi, Bruno. Good. But then, with the help of my friend Fred Boyle, who had extensive experience working with different species of sharks while free diving, he showed that it was possible. So, I'm Fred Boyle. I'm a free diver and a photographer. I grew up in Belgium, which is an odd place for someone who loves the sea. Only 60 kilometers of coastline and murky waters. But uh, my parents always had sailboats. So when I was seven or eight years old, I started snorkeling, free diving, spear fishing, and that became really a, a passion for me. When I was a teenager, free diving was starting as a sport. So I decided to have a go and I quit my job. And after six months, I did my first record. And then I started to get a bit of sponsorship and then and it was it was a go. Freediving gives you a total liberty of movement in the water. You can really move in a three dimension, which you cannot do in scuba. Also, you're more light. And the most important advantage for me is that you're very silent. 
so you don't disturb the animals. I'm very comfortable with marine animals. I know their behavior and a lot of marine biologists, they know everything about the animal in theory, but they don't have that connection. And so I could be the link uh, between the animals and the, the scientists who study them. I met George here in Azores in 2013 or 14. And we went diving and spearfishing a few times together. And then one day he talked to me about a project to tag a blue shark with a kind of lasso color around the head of the shark. And they wanted to do that from the boat, so they were struggling with it. And then one day I said, maybe we should just get in the water and do it. And George told me, no, it's not possible. You cannot do that. It's a shark. Uh, it's not going to be okay uh, to bite. I said, no, I think it's possible. When I saw for the first time that Fred had actually deployed the lasso on a big blue shark and the shark just kept swimming, it was exhilarating to actually see that it was possible to do it. How's it looking? This one is good. We have one big shark here that's very confident. So I'm hoping that it will be fairly easy to deploy this tag. The difficulty in the lasso technique is at the moment you pass it in front of his eyes and the nose because they're very sensitive. It's mostly your attitude that's going to determine the attitude of the animal. If you stress when you do it, the animal will be stressed and the whole process will be stressful and you will feel it stressful and it will go away. There's <laughs> Mr. Blue Shark right there. Hopefully two days to get the tag back and we'll know what he's been up to. He's a cool shark. People have to know their environment in order to love them and protect it. If you don't know anything about a given species, people won't be motivated to protect them or to manage them correctly. What are their essential habitats? What prey are they targeting? What areas of the ocean are they using? That's the kind of answer that you need to manage them and be able to protect those species from different threats like pollution, like habitat destruction, and from fishing, for example. For me, if I collaborate with scientists, the ultimate goal is conservation. Understanding how they move in the water, how long they need to feed during the day, what's the impact of fishing on animals. I think that helps conservation. Managing and protecting sharks is not just about protecting nature, it's about ensuring our future because these are the top predators that regulate the functioning of the whole oceanic ecosystem. So by protecting sharks and managing sharks, we're managing the oceans and ultimately we're contributing to our own survival. Thank you.